Welcome back everyone. We are here once again for more of Freddy Farkas. So the uh, last time we left off, we had just been informed that there was a snail stampede heading for the town. So we have a couple of problems here that we're currently faced with. One of course is what to do with the snails. The other is what to do with this money. The uh, $4.87 that we've suddenly come into possession of. Where or where are we going to spend all this money? Well, let's go around the town and ask a few questions and see if maybe some people have some advice. Let's go ahead and start with the sheriff, why not? Since he's in charge of keeping law and order, maybe he has some ideas. Sheriff, are you going to help me stop that stampede before it runs over the whole town? Now look here, Farkblat! Stopping them horses from putting the town away was all well and good, but you can't stop a stampede, can you? Why, well, there's nothing to be done but batten down the hatches and hope for the best. Me, I figure I'm safe in here. This is the only building in town made out of rock. You go save your own butt, boy, or get out of town like the smart folks are doing. Dag nab you, Sheriff. You're not doing anything to help. Why, sure I am. I'm refusing to panic. Grrr. Well, thanks a lot, Sheriff. Let's see, Sheriff, do you have any idea what to do about all this money? You're not trying to bribe me to open your store back up, are you? What if I were? If you was, I'd have to arrest you for trying to bribe a sheriff. Then I'd have to toss you in the hoo-scow. Then I'd have to hang you. So, I'll ask you again. Was you trying to bribe me? No. I was asking you to look at this money and give me your assessment of whether or not it's counterfeit. It ain't, and thank you so much for asking. Right proper of you. Well, that was very helpful, wasn't it? Um, yeah, as usual, the sheriff's doing absolutely nothing to help with the, uh, with the town. He just wants... It seems like he just wants to get everybody out of the town. What is up with that? The sheriff wants to get everybody out of town, and the banker wants to uh, buy them all out. It's kind of like they're working in cahoots or something. Let's check in with Salvatore. You can breathe easier now, Sal. I took care of that problem with the horses. Turns out somebody put lentils in the feed. Ever hear of something so dastardly? That's the devious, all right, Freddy. But now what are you going to do about that to stampede heading for town? What am I going to do about it? Why is it always me? Sure, and you're the smart one, Freddy Farkas. The one in control, the one we're all watching and counting on. The rest of us are just extras. Now go be a bonny lad and stop that stampede! Hmm. Hey Sal, do you want some money? That's not necessary, Freddy. You don't owe me any money. You haven't been in for a haircut or tooth job for months. Okay. Well, that wasn't very useful either. And I'm sure if we talk to Whittling Willie, he's just going to complain at us like he usually does. Willie, you heard about the snail stampede? Yipper. Ever hear of anything like this happening? Nope, never. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Hey, boy, I'm just an old whittler sitting around watching events unfold and commenting with my folks the old-timey attitude. You know, kind of cranky but with a sense of humor, too. Can't you give me some advice? Well, that ain't my specialty, but I'll tell you this. Them snails ain't much different from your ordinary garden slugs. They'll pr they probably lacks the same things, so just keep that in mind when dealing with them. Thanks. You're welcome. Now get out of here, I'm done with you. Hmm. That was actually probably the most helpful piece of advice that we could have gotten about the snails. Assuming that you know how people deal with garden slugs. If you don't, then that might not be very useful, although I guess you could look it up, but... You know, when this game came out, they didn't have Wikipedia. Uh, and so I'm not really sure how you're supposed to figure that out. If you don't know how people deal with garden slugs, maybe you'd go to the library and look in a book. Hey, Woodling Willie, do you want some money? You don't owe me nothing. Take it away before I change my mind. All right. Well, we're getting somewhere, I guess, but, uh, what is this about garden slugs? Let's see, uh, let's go into Mom's cafe and talk with Mom and help sing. Mom! Mom! Let me guess, you only have one cavity! Huh? No, I wanted to know if you have any salt. There's a stampede of snails a-coming, and I need to stop him. I don't know anything about no stampede! 
Unless they're stepping here to stopping here to eat, I don't even care. As for salt, you know we're a salt-free community. That's why everyone's so laid back, low blood pressure, and we aim to keep it that way. Dang. Have you heard, Hopsting? There's a stampede coming. Nobody tell Hopsting nothing back here. Hopsting could fall over and die and rot, and nobody would even know for days. Well, I'm telling you now. Yeah, yeah. Go and leave Hopsting to suffer in silence. So what if everybody ignore me? So what if nobody talked to me back here, except Mom when she wants something? So what if Hopsting slave over hot steam table all day and work fingers to the bone? I thought you were going to suffer in silence. Okay for you, Freddy Fergus! You get yours, you see! You just like all the rest! Vamos! Hmm. Can we buy something here now that we finally have some money? You don't owe me any money! You haven't bought anything from me in ages! You just keep coming in here every other day and getting free coffee! Free loader, honestly! Flies in the summer, snow fleas in the winter. God, but I miss Missouri! Not need your money! Mom pay me better than I make in San Francisco. Develop Nouvelle Frontier Cuisine. Very popular. Hmm. That was also not very helpful. Well, we could go to the bar, but, uh... We wouldn't want to spend our money on just some alcohol, would we? Nah, that's not a good investment. Here's a better idea. Let's go to the, the Bank of Bob. Let's, uh, let's invest our money. That's the sensible thing to do, right? But first, let's talk to the banker. Say it. Oh, this is the same thing as before. Now I'll just turn down his generous offer. All right, let's go ahead and deposit some money. I'd be happy to keep it safe in your Christmas club account here at the Bank of Bob. If you'd open one, that is. Hmm. We don't appear to have an account here at the Bank of Bob. Uh, and I guess Freddy doesn't want to open one since he obviously doesn't like the banker. Well, this is a, a strange situation. We've come into possession of what was probably a you know a considerable amount of money back in the eight in the late 1800s and yet we have nowhere to spend it on i guess we just have to go to the bar i guess that's our only option i guess this is kind of re uh representative of uh actual actual life in some small towns i guess people who live in small towns sometimes say that there really isn't anything to spend your money on except booze so i guess we have no other choice let's see can we talk to the doc just before we do that doc what do you know about snails they make me sick to my stomach. <clears throat> Pardon? They make you what? Sick. Sick. That'll be quite enough of that, Doc. We're not plugging any shaving cream companies in this game. Hmm. Can you give our money to him? A windfall! Yahoo! Sam, drinks are on me! You got it, Doc. Drinks for everyone. No, Sam! I mean, put the drinks on me! Wait, wait, wait. I'm not giving you this money so you can get drunk. I'm giving it to you so you can get a new start. A whole new beginning. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna get drunk all over again. A whole new start. And I'm taking my money back. Whoa, big surprise there. Alright, let's talk to Sam. Sam! There's a stampede headed for town. Don't go outside. We're open 24 hours a day, Fred. I never go outside. Besides, the sun dries out my beautiful skin. I'm just saying, you know, for your own safety. Gotcha. Tell you what, I'll stay in here and just sort of serve drinks and collect money. You run out around outside like a chicken with your head cut off and save the town, okay? Okay. Alright, well, will Sam accept our money? Hey Sam, give me a case of the beer you just got in from St. Louis. One case of lo... lo... lo brow? Lebra for the pharmacist coming up. Sam hands you a case of how you pronounce that? The beer that gave St. Louis blues. Now you know this beer doesn't come corked, right? They're using some newfangled pinched metal tops. No problem, Sam. I'll take care of it. Okay, fine. That'll be 487. Here you go. Nice bankroll. Come back anytime. Well, that is something. We got some uh yeah, there it is right there. We got some beer. A case of... how do you pronounce that? And that slogan that we already saw. All the bottles tightly stoppered with those newfangled metal caps. Hmm, I guess that means we can't, uh... We can't open them with our hands. Sorry, they've only just developed the bottle cap. They haven't progressed to the twist-off top yet. Yeah, these aren't twist-tops, so... Hmm, what do we have that could open a bottle? 
Maybe that coat hanger from these clothes? No. No, that was not the correct solution. All right, let's break them open with the ladder. You whack the beer with the ladder and it replies, You rung? Ha, <laughs> ha, get it? You rung because it's a ladder? And it, yeah, it has rungs. Well, let's go ahead and check out this snail stampede because uh, you might remember the thing I did last time was I clicked the hand on them. And we get, I think we just get one point for taking the snails. Now, this is not something you have to do at all. This is just like a side thing. But if you're going for the maximum score, as of course I am, you will want to give the snails to somebody who might be able to make some use of them. And that someone is Mom. Let's see. I wonder if Hop Singh has anything to say about them. Mm, mediocre quality snail. Very tough. Make chewy appetizers. You show to mom, she make buying decisions. Hop Singh just work here. All right, let's give them to mom. Helen, have you ever thought about putting escargot on the menu? Score. Hmm, don't know who around here will eat these since they don't give you gas, but I'll put them in a bag of cornstarch and think about it. And I suppose a thank you is in order, so thank you. All right, that was that. So yeah, take the snails and give them to mom. There's absolutely no need to do that. It doesn't really serve any purpose, but I think you get a couple of extra points for doing that. I think you get literally just one point for taking the snails, and then one more point for giving them to mom. That's it. Well, now that we've done that, now that we've talked to the townspeople about the snails, and now that we've gotten a couple of extra points for doing something completely unnecessary and pointless, let's, uh, let's save here. And let's go back to the snails and see what happens if, uh... Oh, hey, look, the stampede's closer than it was last time, I think. Might be hard to tell if you don't remember exactly how it looked before, but I think before the snails were kind of farther back, and now they've progressed to being up here. How do they kick up a dust cloud if they are moving that slowly? I don't think snails could actually kick up a dust cloud like that, no matter how large the stampede is. And it's not even that large of a stampede. It's only about... That looks like between maybe 10 and 20 snails. You could pick those up by hand, couldn't you? Well, anyway, um, let's see if we go back again. Oh yeah, that stampede is definitely closer than it was before. It's definitely moved. So every time we come off the screen and come back, the uh, snails appear to uh, advance a little bit. What happens if we, uh, if we try that again? Oh yeah, they are definitely... Oh, okay, so it's it's a little bit more than the 10 or 20 that I said before. Actually, I'm going to assume that the line of snails stretches back farther than it appears. I mean, it looks like... Uh, here, it looks like it stops right about there. See, at that point right there, it looks like that's where it stops. So that's maybe 20 snails, if that. But uh, I'm going to assume that they just drew it that way for artistic reasons, and that the line of snails extends back much farther. Well, oh dear. Uh-oh. Oh no, you've taken too long. You'll never turn those snails back now. Now, it wasn't as if Freddy didn't have enough time to stop them snails, but somehow he screwed it up r good. The snails ran over Coarse Gold and slimed it to Kingdom Come. Those of us that wasn't killed had to leave town without bringing anything with us. I was one of the ones that didn't make it. That's right, Sonny. You're talking to a ghost. Boo! Yeah. Another sort of different death music, although it's not even really music. That's more like some weird sound effect, but... All right, uh, well, that obviously didn't work. So, what we were saying before, or what I was saying before about garden slugs is... Uh, one way that people deal with garden slugs is to put out beer for them. I don't know why, but apparently slugs are extremely attracted to beer. And so people use beer to sort of lure garden slugs away from their plants and then, like, lure the slugs into a trap. So... Um, maybe snails are the same way. Let's see, what happens if we try to, uh, try to appeal to the snails with some beer? Oh, but first we need to get the beer open. Well, uh, let's see, can we open it with maybe one of these keys? Clank. Clink. Score. Aha! With muscles bulging from years of grappling with childproof caps, you deftly wield the church key and wrench the tops from all the beer bottles. And there we go, now we have a big, frothing mass of beer. It's a case of open... however you pronounce that word that I still don't know how to pronounce. Don't be caught with it in your buggy. Can we drink some of the beer? You take a drink of the beer. 
Fortunately, you've got much more beer left. You could never drink that much beer, so don't even try. Alright, can these snails drink all that beer? Hmm. The game seems to have chosen this moment to decide to ignore the speed setting that I applied. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. Hey, boys, it's Miller time. And with that, you clev cleverly pour bottle after bottle of Sam Andreas' St. Louis brew onto the dusty road in an attempt to divert the stampede. Will it work? Will the snails fall for your ruse? Will they accept a domestic? Slurping their little hearts out, if snails may be said to slurp, or to have hearts for that matter, the little guys follow your lead straight over the cliff beside Blackwater Creek. Isn't that cute? They're so gullible. Don't they look just like lemmings marching over that cliff? Like little lemmings marching over that cliff? And if that wasn't an obvious enough reference... Yes, a very obvious sort of uh, homage to a particular uh, sort of puzzle, sort of puzzle action game, which was extremely popular around the time that this game came out, and actually a very, I would say, quite addictive, but also very challenging, very, uh, very difficult, sometimes very frustrating puzzle action game. Uh, yeah, Lemmings was a great game. Lemmings really is uh, a fantastic game, but it's very difficult and very frustrating sometimes in some of the later levels. Anyway, somehow, this uh, person appears to have teleported here. So let's take a look at him. Look out, Freddy! Injuns! No, wait, this one's an Indian. A real Indian! From India! An Indian sits atop an anthill surrounded by swarms of ants. He looks trapped. You feel sorry for him, if, only, if there were only some way you could help him. So this character is... Um, well... The reason why he exists is to make a pun on Indian, because of course in the Wild West they had lots of Indians, right? But th I guess the game designers thought it would be funny as a joke to put in somebody who is an actual Indian. So I'm going to go ahead and use a stereotypical Indian accent with him. And I hope no one's offended. Uh, I mean, the character is very much a stereotype. He speaks in a stereotypical way, and... Since this game is full of stereotypes, I think that it's appropriate to go along with that. So I'm not trying to make any sort of commentary on anything. I don't want to offend any people who might be of Southern Asian descent. I'm just going to go ahead and roll with what the game presumably intended. And actually, I don't know how this character was voiced in the CD-ROM version, but I assume he used a similar accent for that. Let's go ahead and talk to this guy. Hello, stranger. I haven't seen you around these parts before. I know it's none of my business, but why are you sitting on top of an active anthill in the heat of this semi-desert sun? Oh, my former fellow, I am but the weary traveler from a land far, far away, journeying here peacefully merely to experience the curative powers of your local mineral waters. The other members of my stagecoach party, claiming a frustration with my excessive verbosity and sesquipedalian inclinations. I've got to confess that I don't know what sesquipedalian means, so don't feel bad if you don't either forcefully place me in my current sit sitting position on this lovely feature of your landscape. Knowing full well that because of religious reasons, I would be unable to climb down by myself. How cruel those Yosemite-bound tourists are. My name is Frederick Farkas. I own the local pharmacy here in Korsgold. How do you do, Mr. Farkas? My name is Srinila Kakabagnish. Pardon me if I don't get up. Hmm, you think to yourself. I've been considering taking on a loyal Indian sidekick. I'm seeking a new assistant down at the pharmacy. That should have a period at the end and not a question mark. Would you be considering a relocation to this area? You know Course Gold offers extremely reasonable housing costs and an abundance of sunny weather. Well, no, not really. But yes, perhaps I would be willing. But as you can readily see, I'm quite busy at this current moment. I am here standing myself aside. What can I to do? Have you considered climbing down and walking away? I cannot possibly do that! Life is sacred! If I were to move, I should indubitably injure some of these small six-legged life forms. 
I'm sure someone will come along soon to the aid of me. I'll see what I can do, Srinny. Well, uh, this puzzle is really not that difficult, especially if you've already figured out how to take the ladder from the uh, from the school playground. So yeah, the uh, this is actually reflective of some real life Indian traditions. For those of you who don't know, it's the um, oh I forget what it's called now. Is it the Janists or is it the Sufis or something like that? There's some some uh, religious uh, belief which uh, which tends to be endemic to India, I think where people literally walk around with brooms. Like, if people walk down the sidewalk, they'll literally carry a broom in front of them and sweep the path in front of them because they don't want to step on any insects that might be in front of them. So this is kind of... It's kind of ref reflective of real life. Um, I don't want to go on too much of a... too much of a tirade because I, I'm respectful of people and their religions and, you know, I don't want to s say anything against that. But I think it's kind of difficult to live without killing something because no matter what you eat, even if you're a vegetarian, you know, you're killing bacteria and things like that that live in your, uh, I mean, there are bacteri bacteria that live in your digestive tract and they die as a result of life processes. So I'm pretty sure that on some level it's not really possible to live without some kind of death happening somewhere else, even if it's just like small microorganisms. But, but hey, people believe what they believe and Srini is a very devoted man of the faith who refuses to kill these ants by potentially stepping on them. Although I think... Also, I think he's going to kill himself, because if he dies here in the hot desert sun, isn't that tantamount to suicide? So, I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to... Like I said, I don't want to comment too much on it, because I don't want to make fun of people for their beliefs. I think that uh, that's not fair. So, let's go ahead and just save Srini by giving him this ladder. Oh, I guess I can't click on it there. Where do I click on it? Here. Oh, I guess here. Alright. I've got it, Srini. I know how I can help you. Here you go, partner. Hoof your way across this. Oh, my balance sense is stretching now. You made it. <clears throat> oh, he gives us a hug. Oh, thank you, Mr. P. You saved me. Please don't call me that. Thank you again, Mr. F. I am so much grateful. Oh, grateful enough to accept the assistance position I mentioned earlier? I could really use some help out around the shop. I would be honored. Where do I begin? So Freddy headed on back to the pharmacy, followed by the eternally grateful Srini Lao Kaka Bagnish. Seems like Freddy not only found himself a new assistance at the pharmacy, but also a good friend as well. So I've been thinking about hiring an assistant to help me around the store, clean up, you know, the usual chores. Think you'd be interested? Oh, I would be highly gratuitous if you're bending over to, explain me, to display me such a position. Would you be offering as well a form of payment? I'll pay you ten cents a day and all the rustler stove chocolates you can eat. That is an agreement. Excellent. Uh, um, what was your name again? Srini Lakaka Bagnish, but you may call me Srini, and I'll be calling you Freddy, okay? Okay? Okay, now let's get cracking, Srini. I'd like you to go out there and create some nice displays for the skin lotions. We may be closed temporarily, but we'll be, open we'll be opening up sooner or later, and we've got to be ready. What it is, Freddy? I will be getting on that now. I was going to say, doesn't Freddy kind of think that it might be wise to wait until we can open up the pharmacy again before hiring people to work here for a closed pharmacy? But uh, I guess they sort of lampshaded that by adding at the end that uh, he's he's sure, he's convinced that we're going to open up eventually again. So, all right, that was that. Uh, well, we're here back in our pharmacy, and I guess not much has changed since uh, since we were last here, except obviously that now Srini's working here. Don't shout at Srini from behind the counter. Walk over and talk to him like a human being. Where were you born? In a barn? I have to say, that's a little bit rude, but I, I actually do sometimes feel the same way. You sometimes see people who yell at each other from across a crowded room, and I kind of think, why don't you just walk over to each other so you don't have to yell at each other across the heads of a bunch of other people who are trying to talk to each other. You can just kind of walk over and talk to them face to face. But anyway, uh, Srini, dude, everything going okay in here? 
What is it looking like? I'm having everything under control. You have merely to go be a hero and I'll continue holding up the fort. Thanks. All right. And of course, like everyone else, Rene gives responses to things if we try to give him stuff. Like, for example, if we give him, I don't know, this claim check. Ah, oh, yes! It will be ready on Tuesday! Hee <laughs> I've made it funny! Excuse my jocularity, I do not know whence this piece of paper comes. Okay. Mind the stores, Rini. I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. Okay, the donkey! Alright. I'm just curious, can we go back and get our ladder since we don't seem to be in possession of it anymore? Is it still sitting back there where we, uh, where we left it? Oh. Oh. What's going on here? Uh, we appear to have two buzzards. A few buzzards have landed here waiting for some unfortunate life form to become vulture chow. Is there a difference between a buzzard and a vulture? Hmm. Well, you might want to do something to those buzzards. They're simply living out their portion of the West's ecology. Leave that poor owl alone, you vicious fiends. They ignore you completely. And yes, there appears to be a, an owl perched here on the on this corner of the bridge. It's Cedric. He looks lost and out of place in the hot desert sun. If you listen close, you can almost hear him say, Oh, Freddy, if you're going to go in there, I'm going to wait out here. He always has some flimsy excuse. And I just realized he has kind of the same voice as Srini in my head. Um, Gee, Willikers, you can't quite reach that owl from here. Too bad, you'd like to wring his neck. Have we talked to him? Hey, you. I'm waiting here. It's too dangerous out there. Apparently there's some adventure out in the desert and the owl's waiting to annoy him when he gets back. Yeah, this of course, I'm pretty sure that very nearly every single one of you is already ab abundantly aware of this, but this is Cedric the Owl from King's Quest V. I think I've said it before, I always liked Cedric. I actually think that Cedric is not that bad of a character, and people always dislike him for some reason. And I think the reason why most people dislike him is because they remember his voice from the from the CD-ROM version of King's Quest V. When I first played King's Quest V, I played the floppy version, with, which didn't have voices in it. And I actually thought Cedric was okay. I mean, he's not the bravest character necessarily, but... You know, you've got Graham walking off into a desert with no preparation, with not even any water on him. He's not carrying any source of water, he's not carrying any form of defense. I would say the same thing. Seriously, if I was in that situation, I'd say, look, buddy, dude, friend, if you want to walk off into a desert completely unprepared, I'm not going to stop you, but please understand if I don't go with you. So I, I would just say that's prudent. I, I think that's not so much cowardly as just kind of exercising a reasonable degree of caution. But everybody always complains and says that Cedric is a coward and he's annoying, and I think that's mostly just because of the voice. If you play the game without the the terrible voice that that voice actor gave him that is really annoying, then I think people might realize that Cedric's not really that bad. He's just, you know, he's your typical sort of, um, not necessarily introverted, but sort of, uh, academic sort of nerdy. He's kind of like Harry Potter. Not particularly athletic or anything like that, but, uh, you know, good-hearted. I mean, he's, he's a good-natured fellow. He's not like, it's not like he's evil or anything like that, so I don't know why people dislike him so much. I actually like Cedric. Anyway, can we take the ladder? Oh, yes, we can. We didn't seem to get any points for it, though. You know, I don't think we need the ladder anymore. I think that taking it is kind of a pointless act just done for, because you can, but I don't think that we can actually get any points or need the ladder again, so anyway. Um... Hmm. What happens if we go back? Oh no! What are they doing to Cedric? Poor Cedric the Owl! He'll never delay another scene change! As much as you want to join in, leave Cedric's carcass for the buzzards. Farewell, Cedric. We've hardly knew ye. I think that's not fair. I mean, come on, that's... Is he still there if we go back? Yeah, he's still there. That's just not fair. I mean, come on, folks. Cedric is... He's maybe annoying, but compared to characters like Mordak or something like that who's really evil, you know, he's just... He's just maybe a little bit... Uh, like, he maybe doesn't have the best personality, but come on, that's just mean-spirited. I don't understand why people pick on Cedric so much. Anyway, uh, what's going on? There's really not much happening here. I mean, it seems like the town is peaceful for now. We solved the problem with the horses tooting. We, uh... 
you know, I'm gonna go ahead and save my game uh, because we got so much accomplished. I mean, we uh, met Srini. I mean, we uh, we so solved the problem with the horses tooting in the last episode. We saved saved the town from the snail stampede, and uh, and we rescued Srini. I mean, we've been just consistently being a hero for the whole uh, for the whole duration of this act so far. So what's going on now? Now there doesn't seem to be anything happening. The town's kind of peaceful and quiet. Let's talk to the sheriff and brag to him about how we restored order while he was just sitting in here resting his feet on his desk. Sheriff, I know you couldn't care less, but folks around town are having some sort of mysterious stomach ailment. Well, guess the water in these parts has gone sour. Ain't no surprise, really. We're bound to happen sooner or later. I figure those that don't die from the dysentery will just have to pull up stakes and find some place where the water's good. I don't think that's it at all. I think somebody poisoned the water. If you were any kind of sheriff, you'd look into it. <laughs> like you know anything about being a sheriff. Besides, I know the water ain't poisoned. I had some myself a while ago. Well, this is a little bit, uh... A little bit out of sequence, I guess, since we haven't actually seen any evidence of the uh, of any problems with the water. But if we walk around just a little bit, since uh, since we mentioned water, where could we find water? Over here. There's water over here, but there doesn't appear to be anything unusual here. I guess the other obvious place is the uh, the water tower, which is up here. Oh look, what's this? Oh my! Holy cow! You've never seen such a long line out of the outhouse. Something's rotten in the state of coarse gold's bowels. Hmm. This one appears to be practicing the jitterbug. Oh dear. How long can she hold it? Not long if she keeps bouncing like that. Hmm. He's really got a make. You haven't seen this long a line at the outhouse since the day Mom served her famous chicken sushi with egg tartare. He's gonna explode, Captain, and neither you or I or anyone in the universe can stop it. I cannot tell you how much more she can take, Captain. Don't touch him, Captain. He's liable to blow any second. The engines are already at maximum reverse thrust, Captain. They're giving it all they've got. Say, do any of you guys know how to Madison? Nobody's laughing. She can't hear you over the mighty roar of her lower gastrointestinal tract. Don't talk to him. He's concentrating. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Hmm. That's what she said? Alright. Uh, and if we talk to these people. Hey, you guys. You feel okay? The only response is a chorus of churning stomachs, roiling bowels, and floodgates straining to open. Gosh, what's this about, uh, about the water? I mean, we haven't had any problems with the water. If we turn on the water, can we take a drink from it? You wash your hands. Okay, I wasn't trying to wash my hands. I was trying to drink. Can I... Let's try this. I think we can get a few extra points if we take some water in the beer bottles. You fill one of the empty beer bottles with water from the water tower. Alright, let's turn off the water so we don't waste it. And, uh, let's see, can we take a drink from one of these bottles? You take a swig of water from the water tower. Uh-oh. Your stomach starts to make strange sounds. Your small intestine begins to whine. Your lower intestine starts complaining loudly. Hey, buddy, no cutting! It's people like you that give people like you a bad name. Well, howdy, Mr. Farkas. Uh, I was just leaving, I swear. Give me one more minute. Perfectly okay, Billy. No need to get up. Just move over a little. Well, uh, well, I... Jeez, Mr. Farkas. Invade my personal space, why don't you? Well, a few months later, you emerge feeling refreshed. Gee, that water's got a nasty kick to it. Well, okay, I guess there is something going on with the water after all. Okay, at this point in time, uh, the game sort of, I think, is recycling an idea because you might guess, what do we do when we have health problems in this game? We consult the Modern Day Book of Health and Hygiene. And yes, there is a section on diarrhea. Right here. All right, diarrhea is caused by too many soft, liquidy foods finding their way into your digestive system. Unchecked can lead to dehydration, which is discussed up here, although not usefully. It may be cured quickly and clean, uh, cleanly by eating quantities of solid foods or foods with stiffening ingredients like pectins, such as fibrous breads, apples, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, etc. Well, unfortunately, we don't have any of that, but 
Notice that it says C. Bisalicylate antioxidine. Well, let's go ahead and take a look under the list of medications. Bisalicylate antioxidine. Yeah, has been found effective, albeit highly powerful, to be an effective, albeit highly powerful compound in the correction of diarrhea, although it is not normally recommended for individuals due to its extreme concentration and possibility for overdose with subsequent dire consequences. Presumably constipation or something like that. Well, so this part is pretty obvious. We do the same thing that we've done already several times before. We go back to our pharmacy and cook up the recipe which the manual gives us for that medication. So let's walk in here. You return! Yep. It is good to look upon your eternally smiling countenance of face again. Yeah, yeah, I missed you too. All right, so here's our pharmacy. And let's go ahead and follow the instructions carefully. Uh, all right, as follows. Combine 25 milliliters of bismuth subsalicylate. So where is bismuth subsalicylate? There it is, bismuth subsalicylate. We want 25 milliliters. One, two, three, four, five, since every time we put in five milliliters, so obviously five times five is 25. Um, and five milliliters of orphanomethahedride. Okay, orphanomethid, what the heck? All right. I think a lot of these things don't actually exist. All right, this is orphanomethadride. All right, and oh, we can't mix these in the uh, in the graduated cylinder. Oops, 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 oops. oops. All right, uh, it said we need to combine them in a test tube, I think. Yeah, I don't know why we need to use the test tube this time because we used the the beaker before, and the beaker should serve perfectly well. But no, this time we use the test tube for some bizarre reason. So. Let's go ahead and dump what we have in the test tube, and then add five milliliters of this, and whoops, and put that in the test tube as well. All right, and what is next? So now that we have that, heat over flame until the mixture begins to boil. Pour into medicine bottle and cork. All right. So all we do is light this lamp again, heat this over the flame, and we have the same message as last time. Put out the lamp. In theory, that should have worked with uh, with the uh, beaker as well. I don't know why we had to use the test tube. And that's it, right? So we heat it and then put it into uh, yeah, pour into medicine bottle and cork. So that's it. Just put it in the bottle and put a cork on it. You carefully label the bottle bisalicylate antioxidine. Congratulations. Be careful. This stuff is mighty concentrated. All right. So now that we've got the uh, the chemical. We've got the right medication. All right, that's the same message we saw last time. Let's go ahead and save our game here. Uh, made uh, anti... I don't remember how you're supposed to spell it, so let's just say made anti... Um, let's just say we made a regulator. Good enough. Uh, let's see, can we drink this stuff directly? I think we were warned against that, but let's try it anyway. You take a swig of the concentrated water purification solution. That'll clean your clock. So, sorry to say that's how Freddy Farkas done up and died. Taking medication he didn't need were the death of him, and it weren't long afterwards that Coors Cold fell into the hands of... of... Gold oh, darn it, I'm too choked up to tell you how it all ended. Hey, look, it's Frosty the Snowman. Well, it says never drink your own mistakes, but it wasn't actually a mistake. I'm pretty sure we got it right. But we need some way to, um... What's this? A gigantic pile of 50-pound sacks of baking soda fills the sidewalk in front of your store, nearly blocking the entrance. The baking soda is the Legon Hammer brand, named for the famous international industrialist. His slogan, keep one sack in the smokehouse and another in the stable to help clean... to help keep it clean and fresh smelling. Score. Summoning up superhuman strength, you heft the huge pile of baking soda. Then with a horrible wrenching, tearing sound, you cram the sacks of baking soda into your pants pocket. Uh... Yeah, the baking soda is now an actual inventory item. 
You ordered one sack of baking soda. Owing to an administrative error, you are now the proud possessor of 100 sacks of baking soda, and the superhuman strength required to carry it around. Uh, okay. Going to assume that that's a little bit of video game logic there, which doesn't actually work that way in real life, but that's okay. Alright, so we have lots of baking soda. We don't use the baking soda with this diarrhea problem. We need some way to get this uh, to get this medication to all the people in the town. How are we going to do that? Well, let's find out next time on Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. I'll go and save my game again, because I got the baking soda. And that was the end of that. I think we'll end it here, and in the next episode we'll find out more about how to keep things regular. I hope that I'll see you folks then. Thanks for watching, everyone, and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye for now.